Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the HK Gaming GK61 optical keyboard. Now for many of you that are new here you may be wondering why I'm reviewing such a budget worthy keyboard and the reason for that is because this is exactly the keyboard that I picked up when I was trying to first start building a custom keyboard. And like many custom keyboards, a lot of the parts and pieces are not available to build your own custom keyboard. So I did want to talk about this keyboard in particular, just so that you guys can understand more of what this keyboard is and what it has to offer. Now, if most of you haven't seen it yet, I previously did a video on my $100 keyboard build. This one features a plastic case, yellow switches on top of a aluminum plate, as well as the Canon Keys Instant 60 PCB. Not only that, I went with the budget keycaps, which are the YND keycaps from Amazon. In total, this keyboard costs about $100 with everything said and done. For myself in particular, my main thing was looking for the hot swap PCB that was available. Unfortunately, a lot of them weren't available online. So what I ended up doing was going to Amazon.com and just typing in the search keys hot swap PCB and this keyboard right here came up. Now I want you to understand the biggest difference between optical and regular switches. That was something that I didn't understand when I initially purchased this and a lot of you may have also done the same exact thing or are currently looking at this keyboard for that very exact same reason. At first glance, this keyboard looks exactly the same as any other keyboard you would find or buy pieces for online. However, the PCB is specifically made for optical switches. Optical switches are basically switches that use optical sensors on the PCB for them to detect the switch push through a non-electric motion. Imagine the PCB has its own motion detection sensor which picks up this little tiny pin at the bottom here whenever it is pushed. Whereas in a traditional switch, such as this Trash Panda, has two pins on the bottom which creates a shorted circuit. This basically means, one, that the optical switches don't need any type of electrical connection, and two, it doesn't require any type of soldering. Now for those looking for something like that in particular, that's probably a good option. However, I will say that you don't get the full customizable feel as you would a solderable or hot swap keyboard. And basically that means you are also stuck with getting only Gateron optical switches. Not only that, but the optical switches are also set up to their very own tone. All right, so now that we've got all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about this keyboard and how it sounds and feels. This keyboard is the HK Gaming GK61. The software for this keyboard is not QMK. It uses its own proprietary software to manage the keyboard uh, layout and functions. So all of that will have to be managed through their very own software. It's not exactly the worst software to use, but it's also a little bit confusing when you're trying to set up your keyboard for RGB and keyboard function. The keyboard does feature some cool features such as the ability to do RGB backlight and custom RGB lighting as well as the ability to set up macros if you're a League of Legends player or a Dota player who uses macros in that way. In the box you get the GK61, the USB-C cable, the keycap puller as well as the switch puller. Now all the items that come in the box are always going to be the cheaper version of that because they're trying to keep it in that $60 price range. I do appreciate the fact that you have a wide range of optical switches such as the Gateron Blacks, the Gateron Blues. The get around yellows, get around reds, get around browns, and the get around silvers. Keep in mind that all these switches are the get around optical and they will sound different from their electrical counterpart. You'll notice here also that the keycaps that are on this one in particular are not the same as the ones that you would receive in the box. The reason for this is that I feel that these keycaps add a lot more customizability and overall aesthetic that I was looking for when I first started creating custom keyboards. So this was definitely something that I wanted to do for myself, but it's also my own preference. You can leave the keycaps on it as you'd like, or you can find keycaps in the cherry profile such as this and upgrade it yourself. Initially, when I bought this keyboard, I went for the Gateron Blues just because I wanted to try the Blues. And it was something that I didn't really understand when initially building my custom keyboard. So that's something that I wanted to pick up first. I later found out that I preferred Lanier's more and I ordered the Gateron Blacks later and lubricated them myself. Even though these are cheap Gateron optical switches, I do think that they have their own unique sound and tone and it is very pleasing when you do type on this keyboard. The plate that's built into this is a steel plate. The stabilizers on this keyboard are plate mounted stabilizers, which really isn't that big of a deal. The only issue that I found is that it's a little bit harder to lubricate these and get that really nice sound that you can with regular customizable keyboards. Overall, I will say this keyboard is decent for the price. It does give you that capability to customize your own keyboard without having to learn how to solder or worry about all those extra QMK firmware configurations. In comparison to my other keyboards, I would say that this is a fairly decent keyboard for what you get and what you're looking for. It really just depends on your personal preference. If you're looking for something that's not going to require soldering or any type of extra customizability that may cause you to have to get a soldering iron or other things, this is something that you can definitely look into. You have the ability to swap your keycaps, and you have the ability to lubricate your switches as well as your stabilizers to get the sound that you like. You cannot upgrade the case like you can with the other 60% keyboards on the market right now. So that is one downside. If you're looking for something that's going to be more customizable or gives you more experience as a 
custom keyboard builder, then you definitely want to look for other options. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do the typing test on this and show you guys how it sounds, as well as how it looks when you're typing on the RGB. Overall, the GK61 is a decent keyboard for the price. However, I wouldn't recommend this for somebody trying to get into the full customizable keyboard community simply because this keyboard is more limited than it is capable of upgradability. Overall, the RGB and the cool macro functions are fairly useful. However, for me, as a custom keyboard builder, I would definitely prefer having an aluminum case as well as the ability to upgrade to different and varying switches if I wanted to upgrade or swap those out. You're very limited to just the Gateron optical switches with this keyboard. The sound of it is decent. The Cherry MX layout is fairly decent as well, but in the long term for me myself as a custom keyboard builder, this is not something that I would use on a regular basis. As far as a 60% gamer, this is definitely a great option for that purpose. Well guys, that's the video for today. I hope you guys like it and I apologize if it's not exactly the words that you wanted to hear. If you have any more questions about this keyboard, definitely leave it in the comments below. If there's anything else I can help you with regarding anything keyboard related, definitely leave that in the comments below as well. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.